the very first thing that we had to do was pour a concrete slab. It is about nine by 11. I did all of the grading and all of the excavating, so that means digging up four to six inches below grade, smoothing it all out perfectly, leveling, and then I made the forms that went around, put down vapor barrier and mesh rebar on top of that. So everything was ready to go for the concrete people. Doing all the work up front ourselves helped us to save about half the cost on what it would be to pour this slab. We hired a concrete refinisher who works for the city. He just charged us his day rate. He gave me the number of someone who could provide the concrete. I called them and then we just scheduled a day where both of them could come at the same time. We had to have a pump that had to come through a fence here. It wasn't easy access. We went ahead and set the J bolts in so that the sill plates can be anchored to the ground. This last week I spent the week running both electric and ethernet. That's running underneath the house. Fortunately we're on a crawl space so it's easy to run that kind of stuff. I'm going to frame this outbuilding and then I'll put the whisper room. It's a six by eight soundproof booth that a lot of voiceover artists use when they live in a noisy place like we do. This will effectively make a room within a room best method for soundproofing an area. So the hope and the idea is that I can have a dedicated place that is good and quiet, hopefully diversify my income as an actor because there has been no acting work during the pandemic and this is a good way to be able to do something that's kind of within the field of what I already do but be able to work. That's the idea. Making plans. I don't feel comfortable cutting and building until I have gone over and over and over and over and over my plans because then I waste wood and wood is really expensive right now. I just would rather not make as many mistakes. I'm still gonna make mistakes, but I would like to cut down the amount of mistakes I make. This is kind of the absolute worst time to be building because lumber prices have completely skyrocketed three times the price that they normally are. So this is really not great timing, but can't put a hold on your life forever. So I've gone absolutely insane asking everyone I know if they have leftover two by fours from projects or pressure treated wood or sheathing scoured online for people getting rid of stuff and I've come and disassembled things in their garages. I've done whatever I could do to get some wood for free or cheap and then I bought the rest at Home Depot yesterday. Here is my stash. Tons and tons of wood from a variety of sources. Ready to go. Various sheets of OSB which are insanely priced right now and the way that I calculated it is I saved about 27% in what my cost were going to be by gathering wood from other places. So I think that's pretty good. So this last weekend I went to Habitat Restore. I got a window for $25. It's new, never been installed. It's double pane, dual pane. Who says double pane? Got a door off of Craigslist today. This is also dual pane. Paid $50 for it. So that's a good way to cut down costs as well. I made some good progress yesterday. I got the front wall built, which was just problematic with spacing and you have to make headers for the door and just all of that kind of stuff, which just takes a lot of planning and foresight, and especially because I have a double door system. One opens, then the other one opens. It just has a lot of uh, precise planning that has to be done. I did a front wall and a side wall, and it's just massive. It's so big. Moved this from the garage into the backyard, and it, it fell over in the alleyway. So that wasn't so great, but this thing is just so, so big. We had some freak Santa Ana winds come in. I learned my lesson. I will not be building the other large uh, side panel in the garage. I'll be doing it here even though there's not quite enough room because it's just too hard to move from the detached garage into the backyard. I've got 90s Pandora station playing which motivates the hell out of me. So let's get going. I am feeling slightly resentful that I just spent time making dinner. Don't feel like I should have to take care of basic human needs. Finished sheathing the back panel. You can see my crazy mishmash 
of OSB. Doesn't matter, it's gonna be up against that wall. I'm about to put the house wrap on and I'm dragging my feet because I haven't done it before and I just don't know how it's gonna work. But as with all things, I will figure it out and I will problem solve. First of all, much like my lattice build video, this is not a how-to video. This project has been in the works for a year now. I have been researching and planning and reading books on this to plan this, so that's so far beyond the scope of what this video is. This is more just documentation of this build. I encourage you in your own build to do all the research specific for your needs, because that's what I had to do. This is a very specific thing for me, and so there would be no use going into the nitty gritty details. And also, I find that a lot of times, I just need to get into the build, and I'll figure it out as I do it, because all that work that I did before, it's theoretical, so I don't really know how it's going to turn out until I've got my hands on the project and I'm working on it. Since I've never done this before, I can't tell you how it's going to turn out. I don't know. I think the two main things that are really slowing me down, one, when I go down the research rabbit hole, yesterday, like, I've never done house wrap before. I need to go look up videos and figure it out, and then I just go and, and I watch more, and I watch, and I watch, and I watch, and I read, and I read, and I read. That just takes up a whole lot of time, and that's just inexperience. And then the second thing is, since I'm scrounging together materials, I don't have full sheets of OSB or full sheets of anything. I'm piecing together things, which always takes a whole lot more time to try to make it all fit together. I think that maybe I'm going to make a shift in order to make this go faster. I'm gonna go ahead and take the time today to really plan out how much more I'm going to need to make one run to Home Depot. I can rent the truck instead of trying to wrangle things onto the roof rack of my uh, SUV. That way they're sitting here, they're ready to go. I can use them as needed and I'm not wasting all of that time going and making little trips to get little bits and pieces here and there. Last week when I got all of the studs and some of the siding, it took me over an hour to get all of the stuff on the roof rack. It's such wasted time. So I'm gonna swallow the $20 rental for the truck and just get all the materials. So yesterday I took a quick spin to Home Depot and I'll show you what I found. You might know this already. They have a coal lumber rack. It's painted in purple and that's 70% off of their lumber. Yesterday I found this piece of shit OSB board marked in purple. It's chipboard. It's already eaten by a beaver. It's been cut into and it looks like they were storing concrete on it. This is a used piece of OSB. I thought for sure that they would give it to me for free because it's a used piece of OSB. OSB. It's a piece of shit piece of wood. They sold it to me for $17. And of course I'm the idiot who bought it because I'm so desperate to save some money on all of this because an OSB sheet is $57 right now, which is making me swallow knives to think about paying. It's April, 2021. If you're watching this in the future, you're not paying ridiculous prices for lumber. Hopefully this will die down, but I am right now. I have shot two commercials in the last two weeks. I've had some good paydays. I'm just gonna go ahead and mentally categorize that money that I got from that to this project. So I don't feel like I'm just spending all the money that wasn't there. Just know that hopefully this is in investing into my career and it'll get payback when I book some jobs with this booth. All right, day six. Day five did not go how I thought it would. I think that this might be what they call rock bottom. I am quite literally dumpster diving right now. Told myself this morning that I was just going to spend the money so that I could get moving and yet here I am. I'm spiraling, trolling through the alleyways, trying to find OSB and plywood. This is absolutely pathetic. I have no excuse. The good news is I have all of my wood now. I rented a truck from Home Depot for the first time and it was significantly easier than loading everything on my car. Today, finish this siding on this back wall, do the OSB and the siding on the side wall, as well as the house wrap, and then lift the frames into position. I am 99% sure that there's no way that I can raise these on my own, but you know that I'm gonna try. I am feeling pretty depressed right now. I am not physically capable of raising the back wall by myself. And I can't move forward with anything without getting these walls lifted. They're just too heavy and I've got nobody to help me. So I'm feeling really hamstrung and very limited, very powerless right now, which is a very uncomfortable place for me. I've lost my entire day. I spent an hour trying to lift it up on that jack and aside from being very dangerous, it, I still couldn't get it up. I can't prep anything, I can't do anything. I'm just completely stopped in my tracks and that is just very frustrating because it was a perfect day. I could have gotten a lot of work done today. Makes me think that maybe I've got some soul work to do because limits are a very normal part of everyday life. Not being able to do what you wanna do when you wanna do it is not a big deal and that's all part of growing up and being mature, but boy, boy is it hard for me to deal with. I've got all of this potential and all of this energy ready to go and it just is completely wasted and I can do nothing with it. What are you gonna do? 
regroup and I guess in two days when I get to work on it again, hope that I somehow have someone to help me lift the walls so I can do anything. <sighs> I feel like we've lost that sense of community, raise the barn together, or family, or friends, helping out each other on different, you know, home projects and stuff. That's not a thing out here, or at least that's not with my friend group. Everyone outsources everything. Nobody does anything themselves. Most of the people that I know are not really super excited to get their hands dirty working on anything. They would just hire somebody. And I just need someone for three seconds to help lift it. So I don't really want to pay a worker to come and help me lift something for three seconds. It just seems absolutely ridiculous to do that. Okay, enough complaining. That does nothing. Good progress. Short day though, only a half day because once again, I'm in the position of not being able to lift things without other people. So we're hoping that we can get some friends over tomorrow and have a good old fashioned barn raising together because I think even two of us is not enough for these walls. So this morning I went through and finished nailing in the siding that was already there and I put in this galvanized Z-bar strip where you're supposed to put between two panels of siding. And then I cut this thin little piece here of siding to finish it off, nailed everything in and then painted it all Tomorrow, what's gonna happen is this back wall here is going to be set back onto its J-bolts behind there and secured. And then we're going to take this big side wall, bring it up, push it back into the corner and set it on its J-bolts, secure it. We tie the two together, both the back and the side wall, which then allows us to bring in the window wall, which is this front side wall, and then the door wall, and that is the front wall that'll go right here. And then I can tie them all together, put in the double header on each of them, which will tie them all together. From there, that means that everything is good and secure and stable and I can do roof work and other work that I don't think I'm gonna need any more manpower for. I can just kind of do it on my own, which means I can work faster and not have to wait on other people, which is great. I really don't know if it's possible to be more excited about what's going on here behind me because it just screams potential, right? Having the walls up is just very exciting. Well, I have kind of taken this week off after we got the walls raised, which was just tremendous. And it really felt like that was the biggest hurdle to get over. And now everything from here is just gonna kind of fall in place and it's not gonna be near as big or hard. I say that, it's probably going to be big and hard, but for right now, I'm feeling pretty optimistic. Getting on the roof next, that's uh, what I'm planning. I'm watching a lot of videos, trying to learn everything that I can, um, figure out how I'm going to make this roof while also enabling myself to assemble the whisper room inside. Clearances are a big deal. It's gonna be pretty tight in there. I'm gonna try to make a mock-up of one of the walls of the whisper room and just see how much clearance I need to get inside the shed right now, the outbuilding, in order to move around and put stuff in place because that'll inform how much I can finish of the walls before we install the whisper room. If we need to keep the walls open so that we can slide pieces of the whisper room in and out, then that's what we'll do and I'll just work around that. If we don't, then I can do some finishing, which will help with clearances so I'm not bunched up into the side next to the whisper room trying to put drywall up. Rafters are up. This was immensely satisfying. I got flooring for super cheap, got it from someone off Craigslist. 100 square feet for $30, which is just blow my mind stupid. Let's take a look. I didn't see you there. False, I did. For this is a window. That's right, folks. 
This shed comes complete with a window, including a screen to let in fresh air, sunlight, because it's a window, and it's a window. I spent yesterday getting all the receptacles installed on the walls where I wanted them. Spent a lot of time mapping out my electrical plan. I have to do that since things will be daisy chained and it's important to make sure that switches aren't controlling outlets. We've got multiple outlets and switches and lights. So today I did all of the wiring. We are all wired in here for both ethernet, lights, and outlets. And it is all GFCI protected as well. This handy tester to tell me the most satisfying thing on earth. Wait for it. What's that? Two lights, which means did it right. I've gone and tested all the other outlets. Got one here, got a double here, got my switch, which leads to the light, which the fixture is not in yet from Lowe's. I've got an outdoor switch here. This is a weatherproof box, but it also have a weatherproof switch that's on it since it is going to be sticking out on the exterior, which will control an outdoor light right there. Well, before this all gets covered up, I'll show you what I've done so far. I have done expansion foam in the corners. I have done expansion foam and some <laughs> cracks and gaps. I wasn't doing all of them. There were just some large ones due to shoddy plywood. Filled the bottom of the sill plate with expansion foam. And then I went through and I, I cut where it had extended outside onto the floor so that the flooring can be nice and flush. I also did around the window with the expansion foam that is four windows and doors. So it has less pressure to bow the window. And then I kind of cleaned it up a bit so that the drywall will sit flush. Well, I just put in my very last piece of drywall. Just took way longer than I thought it would. Big surprise, everything does. And now I just have to tape and mud. Just have to. Then I can put in flooring, and then we can finally install the whisper room. So, this is pretty awesome. Well, the last few days, I have been taping and mudding. And I gotta say, this is the first time on this project that I almost feel like quitting. Hate my life, hate this process, feel zero gratification. I think it looks awful. So, there's that. painted all of this studio room and I think it looks good. I mixed my own color with just stuff I had left over and I like it. It's kind of a I don't know, denim blue purpley kind of thing. The taping is really showing up which is depressing since it took me three four days to mud and tape and it was a miserable job and then it still looks terrible. So what was the point of all that? I don't really know. I won't really be seeing these walls so I guess it's not that big of a deal but it does bother me. Having flooring in here definitely gives it more of a finished feel. And after putting the trim on the window and the plates on the wall, I feel like this place is really shaping up. The next thing I'm going to try to do is disassemble the whisper room by myself, which is a really stupid idea, but I'm gonna do it anyways until I decide that it's too hard and stop. When you're working alone, that's just a, that's a choice that you make. Well, I'm coming to you live from 
well this isn't live because you're seeing this later, but I'm coming to you from the whisper room inside my studio. Made great progress, got it all assembled yesterday. It's looking great. Just enough clearance for the vents over here on the side and over here. I got the light installed above the whisper room and today I'm going to go ahead and drywall this front area so that we can close this in and then after that we do the sheathing and then the roof and this thing is done which is so exciting. I feel like I'm finally like the final push of this. I did the drywall and I mudded and taped and I painted today. So now I can move on to insulation and the sheathing on this final wall. Mudding and taping still sucks and I never want to do it again. Yesterday I got insulation and these studs and then I put sheathing over it. And today I have the housework on it, and I think I still have time to go ahead and get all the siding up. Uh, so things are definitely progressing. Uh, the inside is pretty much done, and I'm feeling really good about it. Normally I'm just kind of the fun. It is hotter than Hades in LA right now, but I'm very excited to have my door up after custom building the threshold and the jam, and it just looks so great and really feels like a big move forward. Well, today was another hard, hot day, but some really good progress got made. I got the roofing felt up on the top, and I also installed an electronic lock on the door. And I got the drip edge on the eave and the gable front. So tomorrow, starter strip and uh, shingles. And that kind of finishes us up. Well, guess what? She's all done. Three months later, here she is, guys. Today was the final day of just painting some trim. I hate painting still, and then putting some hardscape in front of the shed, which was just decomposed granite and some pavers. So let's take a look. Welcome to my brand new sound booth where I'm going to record voiceover. Listen to how quiet it is.
what a journey it's been. Thank you for joining me on this. I'm so excited for what's going to come, and I am thrilled. I'm absolutely thrilled with how this has all turned out, and I'm very proud of myself. I took on something I didn't know how to do. I learned so much. I made a lot of mistakes, but I also surprised myself. And now I have this beautiful space that will、uh, help me work, which is pretty incredible.